This is our galaxy, the Milky Way. It appears undisturbed, but something extraordinary is happening beneath the surface. One of its massive stars is dying. Its life ends with one of the most powerful events in the cosmos. A supernova explosion that outshines all the other stars in its galaxy combined. The celestial body has died, but in its place, something very strange has formed. A black hole has been born. To understand what a black hole is and how it forms, we first need a general understanding of a star's life cycle. Stars form when a large amount of gas, mostly hydrogen, collapses under its own gravity. The nucleus of a hydrogen atom consists of a single proton. When atomic nuclei get close to each other, their positive charges repel them from one another, driving them straight into another nucleus. In the collapsing gas cloud, atoms collide more and more frequently and at greater speeds, causing friction heating up the cloud. Once the temperature of the gas exceeds 100 million degrees Celsius, the hydrogen atoms fuse together. This is nuclear fusion, during which hydrogen atoms release part of their mass as a tremendous amount of energy. This process creates helium from hydrogen. The energy from the fusion pushes matter outward, while gravity compresses it inward. Contraction stops when the inward and outward forces balance each other. At this moment, a new star is born. But its days are numbered because it continuously loses energy during fusion, radiating it into space. A star's life and the manner of its death almost entirely depend on the amount of material that formed it, its mass. Less mass means weaker gravity. This results in lower inward pressure, lower temperature, and thus milder fusion. Smaller stars can survive for billions of years. An example is our sun, which will run out of hydrogen in roughly five billion years. It's a completely different story for much more massive stars. These giant stars, due to their mass, have immense gravity, causing extremely intense fusion in their cores. In just a few hundred million years, they burn through most of their hydrogen. As hydrogen runs out, the star's core begins to shrink. As a result, the material becomes hotter. The released energy pushes the star's outer layers further out. The helium forming the contracting core becomes so hot that it fuses further, turning into a heavier element, carbon. However, these nuclear reactions no longer produce enough energy to maintain the balance between outward thermal pressure and inward gravity. Each layer continues to shrink, raising the core's temperature. Under higher pressure, heavier and heavier elements are formed. Carbon turns into oxygen, then neon, magnesium, silicon, and eventually iron. Iron cannot fuse further inside the star. It doesn't generate more outward energy. At this very moment, gravity wins. The star collapses into itself in just a fraction of a second. Its outer layers bounce off the inner core at nearly the speed of light, resulting in one of the most powerful phenomena in the universe, the supernova explosion. This breathtaking event produces enough energy to create all elements heavier than iron. Nickel, copper, zinc, silver, gold, and other materials are flung across space, traveling for light years and billions of years later, joining other nebulae to form a new generation of stars and planets. But where did most of the star go? Where it should be, there is now nothing but a hole in space-time, a black hole. We know that gravity is not a traditional force, 
but rather the curvature of space-time caused by objects with mass. The more massive the object, the greater the curvature of space-time. That is, the stronger the gravity. If we shoot a cannonball vertically upward on Earth, its ascent slows due to gravity, eventually stopping, and then accelerating back toward Earth. This can be imagined as trying to roll a ball up a steep hill. If the ball isn't pushed hard enough, it won't reach the top and will roll back down. But if it's pushed with sufficient force, it will climb the slope. In other words, if the cannonball's initial upward speed exceeds a critical value called escape velocity, it will leave Earth's gravitational pull. So the saying, what goes up must come down, is only true if the speed is less than the escape velocity. On Earth, this escape velocity is 11.2 kilometers per second, while on the much more massive Sun, it is 618 kilometers per second. Both values are far below the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second. So light can easily escape the gravity of Earth or the Sun. But if a sufficiently massive star collapses into a small enough region of space, the curvature of space-time around it becomes so extreme that even light can no longer climb out. This boundary marks the surface called the event horizon. Once something crosses it, it can never escape. To escape the hole, something would have to travel faster than light. And not just that, it would also have to move backward in time, because in black holes, space-time swirls inward toward the center. In other words, the future is inward. Since black holes emit no light and don't reflect light from other stars, we can only detect their existence by their effects on their surroundings. Sometimes it seems like stars are orbiting around nothing at incredible speeds, but in reality, they are orbiting a black hole. The curved space-time around a black hole bends light, distorting the image of stars. This distortion is called gravitational lensing because it resembles how an optical lens distorts an image. If a black hole is not spinning, light rays from stars behind it reach us by the shortest path. But since they pass through the curved space around the hole, their paths also bend. One bent light ray might reach us from the left side of the hole, while another comes from the right side, producing two images of the same star. However, rotating black holes drag space-time with them, not only curving it, but also twisting it. Some light rays pass above the event horizon, others below it, but their paths are too complex to examine in detail. When a star collapses, it typically doesn't happen evenly. The black hole gets a kick, causing it to move and wander through space. It often happens that one of a binary star pair becomes a black hole. Whatever the reason, if a star gets too close to a black hole, its tidal force begins to stretch it and twist it around. Soon, most of the star's matter settles into an orbit around the black hole, forming an accretion disk. The orbiting material heats up to 10 trillion degrees Celsius due to friction. It emits so much energy and light that it can shine a hundred times brighter than the entire galaxy. The spinning black hole causes space to swirl twisting the magnetic field generated by the accretion disk and launching hot ionized gas at nearly the speed of light. These jets are unbelievably energetic, since black holes can consume thousands of solar masses per year. These gigantic dynamos can stay active for hundreds of millions of years. Once they consume everything nearby, they may seem less dangerous from afar but approaching them would be a fatal mistake. If we do happen to fall into a black hole feet first, 
the gravitational force acting on us grows enormously. During the fall, gravity pulls harder on our feet than on our head, so our legs accelerate faster. The difference in gravitational pull between our head and feet, otherwise known as the tidal force, increases steeply as we approach the center of the black hole. Our body remains intact until the tidal force exceeds the forces holding it together. Once that happens, our body tears in two at the waist. As we continue to fall, our parts are further divided. Once reduced to organic molecules, the tidal forces act on them as well, pulling them apart. Eventually, our atoms break down into elementary particles, and since all parts of us head toward the center of the black hole, we are stretched into a single long thread of particles. This is what happens from our perspective, but if someone were watching from afar, they would see us slowing down as we approach the black hole and stopping at the event horizon, as if frozen in time. From the outside, that's exactly what happens. As we approach the hole, time slows down relative to an outside observer and stops completely at the event horizon. Our frozen image would gradually turn red, fade and disappear. If we were orbiting right on the edge of the event horizon in a spaceship, only a few minutes would pass for us, while millions of years pass elsewhere in the universe. There will soon be a full video about time dilation on the channel. But not all black holes tear stars apart or spaghettify us before we cross the event horizon. Only small ones do, because smaller black holes have event horizons closer to their centers, meaning their tidal forces are stronger. Small black holes may have only a few solar masses, but much larger ones exist. At the center of our galaxy is a supermassive black hole with over 4 million solar masses, and it's almost certain that every galaxy contains a massive black hole at its core. Despite its size, ours is small compared to others. For example, the nearby Andromeda galaxy has 125 times larger. Even these are minor compared to the largest found so far. More than 10 billion light years away, there's a black hole with 66 billion solar masses, enough to fit 11 of our solar system side by side. But even that is smaller than the largest black hole discovered so far, Phoenix A. It has a mass of 100 billion suns, and it would take us thousands of years to travel around it just once. If a black hole consumes something, its information can never escape. This wouldn't be such a big deal if black holes lived forever. Then we could simply say the information still exists somewhere inside the event horizon. We just can't see it. This somewhere is usually described as a singularity, a point of infinite density and zero volume at the black hole's center. Singularity sounds impressive, but it's meaningless. It just indicates that the mathematical model we use breaks down inside them. No physicist seriously believes that a real singularity forms inside a black hole. A better idea for rotating black holes is that the singularity is stretched by extreme forces into a ring-like shape. But that's not really the problem. The real issue is that black holes are not eternal. We know that the vacuum isn't truly empty. Virtual particle pairs constantly pop in and out of existence, annihilating each other almost instantly. If this happens near the event horizon, one particle might fall in while the other escapes. The one falling in has negative energy, meaning the black hole effectively consumes negative calories. Over time, it loses mass particle by particle until after an unimaginably long time, it either evaporates completely or ends in a massive explosion. But if the black hole ceases to exist, the information it absorbed vanishes too. That would be as if the information had been completely erased from the universe. 
Yet this contradicts the laws of physics. Imagine that we could somehow track every single particle of a book. We set the book on fire, and once the last page is gone, we collect all the molecules and radiation it became, then rebuild it atom by atom. In theory, this works because the book's information wasn't lost, just transformed. But when black holes die, the information they consume seems lost. This is the so-called information paradox, a dramatic term for the fact that we still don't fully understand these extreme regions of space-time. We have theories, but they lead us into the speculative realms of quantum gravity, two-dimensional holograms, wormholes, and the multiverse. Since the physics inside a collapsing black hole is exactly the time-reversed version of the physics of the Big Bang expanding outward from a singularity, understanding black holes might unlock the mystery of the universe's origin. If we can figure out exactly what happens inside black holes, it could open new frontiers in physics. But we must also be prepared for the possibility that this knowledge may remain hidden from us forever.